If you caught my video that I uploaded on Thursday, you know that I was discussing my five bold predictions for the Chicago Bulls this upcoming season, and one of those predictions was that Kobe White will be traded by the trade deadline this upcoming year, and I had some people a bit up in arms at me saying, why would the Bulls do that? Why would they trade a young scoring guard even if he is? coming off the bench. And for the record, which I stated in the video, me giving that prediction does not mean I want for Kobe to be traded. I've actually stated multiple times that I think the Bulls should hang on to Kobe for a little while longer to see how he fits with this new look roster. But despite what I want or what the fans want, it is uncertain what the future of Kobe White and his time in Chicago will entail. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. So what's going on, everyone? You are listening to Bull Central here. Hope you're all doing well. So in the 2018-19 NBA season, the Bulls were in ultimate tanking mode, trying to give themselves the best odds to land Zion Williamson and Ja Morant, who were the two prized possessions of that NBA draft. They were expected to go one and two, respectively. And despite the Bulls actually finishing with the fourth worst record in the NBA, giving them pretty good odds to land the number one and number two pick, well, the ping pong balls did not bounce in their favor and you had teams who finished with a better record jump to the top spots in the New Orleans Pelicans and the Memphis Grizzlies, which again is why I think taking is a horrible strategy, especially now that the league has shifted the odds out even further across lottery teams. Not only that, but the Bulls got even more unlucky falling all the way to the number seven pick in the 2019 draft, which the Bulls ultimately used to select Kobe White. Now, it's important to note that this was the last draft pick made by the previous front office and i'll get to why that's important in a minute but to be honest i wasn't that upset by this pick especially after what you saw kobe being able to do in his rookie season and it seemed like a pretty solid pickup for the number seven pick anyway kobe age 19 his rookie season showed flashes of being a very capable high volume scorer who was quick playing off the ball and towards the end of his rookie season before the season was suspended anyway due to the pandemic he started looking like he was going to be a capable starting point guard for the Bulls, a capable starting point guard over Sadoransky, and did eventually start the very last game before the season was shut down. And he earned that spot of his increased production and efficiency. You know, Kobe finished his rookie season averaging 13.2 points per game, shooting near 40% from the field and 35% from a three, while also averaging 3.5 rebounds and 2.7 assists. You could tell after his rookie year that the kid had a lot of potential, despite having a lot of flaws to his game, which obviously you're going to expect some flaws to happen from a 19 year old player. It was clear he needed to work on his defense, his turnover rate, his ball handling, and also just his playmaking in general if he was going to be the Bulls starting point guard. But overall, it was a decent rookie season and he actually earned himself all rookie second team honors. His second season came around and with a new coach and a new front office, Kobe proved that he was deserving of that starting spot in training camp and was the Bulls' starting point guard to begin the season. Kobe, of course, had his ups and downs, which again, something we saw in his rookie season in that he struggled with consistency. You would have some nights where he would score eight threes in a game, and then in some instances, he would go scoreless, shooting 0 for 11 from the field or sometimes worse. You know, what Kobe really struggled with most was being the Bulls' lead point guard was his ability to run an offense effectively. And because of that, the team struggled. And he was eventually benched while Sadoransky was reinserted back into the starting lineup. Now, Sato only temporarily held that role. Kobe would eventually be brought back into the starting lineup. And he actually looked pretty decent towards the end of the season, showing improvement not only with his efficiency in terms of his scoring, but also with his playmaking and overall decision making on the court. He started to look more comfortable running the offense and although still a lot to learn, showed that he had the work ethic and desire to get better at that role. Kobe finished his second season in the league, improving in most statistical categories, averaging 15.1 points per game, 4.1 rebounds, and greatly improving his passing going from 2.7 assists in his rookie year to a tad under five assists per game in his second season. He also improved his shooting going from 41% from the field and even brought his free throw shooting up to 90%. So the progress was there. It would be one thing to regress from your rookie season to your sophomore season, but we saw improvement from Kobe White. And again, only 21 years old. So obviously you would expect for a player like Kobe at that age who isn't even close to his prime yet to get even better. All of that being said, though, throughout the season and offseason, the talk of the Bulls and what they needed to do to the roster, among many things, 
but that was to upgrade at the point guard position. Like despite Kobe getting better and still only being 21 years of age, what everyone was talking about was how do they upgrade at their point guard role, especially now that they fast track their timeline after trading draft picks and their young center in Wendell Carter Jr. for Nikola Vucevic. And of course, once free agency began, the Bulls instantly signed Lonzo Ball, who another player, again, has his flaws, but is an upgrade, at least for a point guard role, since Lonzo is a great playmaker, passer with incredible court vision, and is also a good defender, something Kobe White is not. Not only that, but the Bulls also drafted Ayo Dosumu, a combo guard who can play the one or two, but played a lot of point guard in college. And of course, the Bulls also signed another backup guard in Alex Caruso. So the Bulls added three guards to the roster and gave up one. The other thing that made the situation worse for Kobe, which this happened before all of the recent transactions in free agency, was that Kobe suffered a shoulder injury while practicing, which sidelined him anywhere from four to six months, which would mean he would spend the offseason rehabbing his shoulder rather than spending it working out and putting up shots and practicing his game even further. At best, Kobe will be back in time for preseason play, but would still miss training camp. And at worst, Kobe could be out all the way until December, which with him being out, leaves other guys more opportunities to shine, specifically the 21-year-old rookie in Ayo Desumu, because unlike Kobe, Ayo was a draft selection made by the new front office, while Kobe remains the only player outside of Zach Levine from the old regime. So with all of these factors in mind and with that context for where we got to where we are today, what does all of this mean for Kobe's future? Now, if you look at the way that this team is currently constructed with first and foremost, Lonzo and Levine in the starting lineup, who Kobe isn't good enough to be able to start over both of those guys, you add Caruso, who the Bulls need because of his defense off the bench, and then you also add their rookie in Io, who again, I think Kobe is better than, at least as they stand currently. Uh, so Kobe would clearly get more minutes over someone like Io, but, Kobe, again, is likely going to miss the start of the season, which is going to open up opportunities for Desumu to show what he can do. And if he starts to shine, you have to think the front office is going to start thinking about trade options for Kobe White. Because at that point, does it make sense to hold on to Kobe and Io, and even Caruso for that matter, if Io is already starting to show that he can play and is NBA ready? Because whenever Kobe does come back, there aren't going to be enough minutes to go around for all of these guards, especially because we know both Levine and Lonzo are going to be getting the bulk of the minutes at the one and two. Now, I've said it before, but Kobe, when he was benched last season and you started seeing him get 12 or 16 minutes a game off the bench, that he really struggled to play well. Whenever he was put into the game, he was doing everything he could to showcase why he should be put into the starting lineup and started making poor decisions and taking bad shots. And my fear is that we'll start seeing the same thing with Kobe coming off the bench this year. In any event though, from my point of view, Kobe is too good of a player to be coming off the bench, but also not good enough, at least at this point in his career, to be a starter on a playoff team. And because the Bulls are looking to win now and have prioritized Lonzo Ball over Kobe, and since he's not going to start over Levine, and because Kobe is good enough to be a starter on a rebuilding team anyway, and again, he's young, upside potential, there will be a trade market for him that I think this front office is going to want to pursue and not pass up on, especially if midway through the season they see a rise in Io and realize there really isn't a place for Kobe anymore. And rather than let the talent be wasted, you move him for some assets. I personally think that what would make the most sense is trading him for some big man depth, given the Bulls really only have three big men uh, on the roster. And since they already have the guard position set anyway, this is really the only area of need for them, at least at this time. Or if not for big man, potentially some draft capital, at least in the form of a first round pick, which you guys know me, I'm not as high on stocking draft picks when you're looking to win now and you're not in a rebuild. Uh, but for the Bulls anyway, because they have traded away so many draft picks and it's still possible that they have to give up one in the Lonzo Ball investigation, it might make the most sense to acquire some additional draft picks in the event things don't work out with this experiment of Levine, DeRozan, Vucevic, and Lonzo. Now, if Kobe isn't traded by 
the deadline. I really do find it hard to believe that he will remain on the team beyond next offseason. And really, it's all for the reasons I just explained, but even more so because the Bulls will be looking to potentially bring in more free agents, unless, of course, Levine decides to bounce and go to another team next offseason, then sure, maybe you hold on to Kobe because they're going to need him. But at that point, the Bulls have much bigger problems to deal with uh, than trying to figure out Kobe's future if Levine were to leave. Again, my hope is that the Bulls do keep Kobe. I think it would be premature to trade him this early in his career, kind of like what they did when trading away Daniel Gafford. I think having someone like Kobe off the bench as their primary scorer in that second unit is definitely something that is going to be needed, especially when you look at the bench and see that most of these guys are better known for their defense. So I hope that Kobe is still going to be able to fit with this roster, accept his role coming off the bench, embrace it, and be a key contributor to this team, which will hopefully be a playoff team. I want to hear what you guys think, though. What do you think is the future of Kobe White's role with the Chicago Bulls? Do you see him sticking around with the Bulls for the long term, or do you think that he gets moved sometime this season, if not next offseason? Let me know in the comments, and as always, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan, as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.